Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodovkar Schaller. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about Fiendish Freddy's Big Top O Fun. That's right. That'd be great. So, but before we do, we got a couple uh, couple things to talk about. Um, we got a letter from Gary Hucker, and uh, he said, the Huck. "Yeah, he said, uh, hope you guys are enjoying the Christmas season. We are. Oh yeah. Uh, he said, I'm having fun riding up at our local mountain biking park whilst on holiday. The weather is great for barbecues and swimming at the moment. I bet Gary's in better shape than I am. I would almost guarantee that he he could run circles around both of us." Um, he, uh, he says, hope it's not too cold there, of course, in New Zealand. It's summertime. So. Mm, lucky dog. Yeah. He said, the Christmas special was great. Uh, now I'm on holiday and the craziness is over. I've got more time to sit back and watch your videos. You guys are really entertaining with your flow, chemistry, and brilliant storytelling. Really? That's all you. I love Gary. I don't, I don't do any brilliant storytelling. He says, I just got my A3000 board back from being repaired, so he's going to have a good play with that. Cheers from New Zealand. Nice. Yeah. Nice, man. Gary, he, he's another guy living in Fat City. He's yeah. got all the toys. All the toys. Um, Aaron, I wanted to present you with something. <laughs> so, as uh, we had the uh, Amigo Studios Christmas party last week, uh, we had uh, several. I think we had eight different computer and pinball and arcade machines set up for play. We had a high score tournament for each, and uh, the winner, very clever, the winner of the Hybris competition, of course, was Aaron. Yeah. So Aaron, you get that uh, especially created ornament with the Hybris game on it. Our very first episode, boat. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it, eh? Yeah. High score champion. I'm surprised. I thought Brent might go in there and get it. You did it. You did it. That's the only thing I won, huh? That's the only thing you won. Who won overall? Jamie? Uh, no, Brent did, because Jamie right. didn't play all the games. Brent. This guy. And I also wanted to award this to Luke. Luke will be the high score champion of oh, Mario Brothers, because he loved boy. playing Mario Brothers. Boy. Are these... Who actually had the high score of Mario Brothers? Do you have any idea? Oh, uh, it's on the paper over uh, there, but... you beautiful. He'll love that. He'll make him so happy. Yeah. Thank you guys you. can decorate your tree with that news every year. Beautiful. We go. It's gonna be up for two more days. I'll stick awesome. them on there. Very good. <laughs> All right. Um, I've got good news about our um, our collector's edition of Defender of the Crown. I did see that we have a winner. Yeah, Adam Bradley did claim his prize. Yes. So I was, better late than never, Adam. Yeah. So he's I, a nice. He's a nice cat too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, real good guy. And um, so I was glad that he was uh, he could do that. And I shipped out all of the prizes and all of the postcards. Good job, because that's no easy task. And I believe the winner of that particular item was in Australia, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, and uh, I can just tell you this. It's a good thing that we have such great Patreon people. Yeah, because cause I can imagine <laughs> shipping, just shipping that one thing probably cost you know, a, a it, bucket. It cost 50 cents more to ship that to Australia than the game that went to England. 50 cents more, that's hmm, it. That's strange, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just overseas shipping. They just charge you an arm and a leg no matter what. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter where it's going. By the way, FYI, I'm still waiting for my item from Amiga Kit. Mm. Get on it, Amiga mm. Kit. I've emailed these suckers twice, twice. I've put a ticket out on it. <laughs> it's been over a month. <clears throat> I usually like Amiga Kit. I'm usually cool with Amiga Kit, but they haven't responded it's in a, a while. month. They yeah. haven't responded Give me some love. And remind there. remind us one more time what what, I what haven't you told anybody. Yeah, oh, it's a surprise. It's a got surprise. It, got it. That's right. Well, speaking of surprises, I've got one more for you. All right. Check that out. This is Got Jewel. This is a uh, Christmas card yeah. from none other than in the chat room right now, O'Brien. Oh boy. So, Brian says, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks for the great shows in 2016. Looking forward to following you in 2017. All the best to Aaron as well. So, you even mentioned you. Best wishes, Jonas from O'Brien's Beautiful. Retro. Hey, thanks a lot. Isn't that nice? 
And written in excellent English, I might add. And yeah. Good handwriting, better than mine. Much better, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, thank you, O'Brien. So we get to thank you in person, kind of, because you're right there in the yes, chat room. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. Jonas O'Brien, very cool. Very nice, eh? All right. Um, Just in time. So that concludes kind of our, our feedback. Uh, <sighs> what news have you? There's a lot of news this week. <laughs> the news is loose. Um, <clears throat> let's start off with X Bench. Okay. Uh, if you'll recall, we did a little uh, feature on that particular program. Gosh, I don't have. It's been a while. It's been a long I don't time. even really remember what that is. It's a fr- it's an Amiga front end gaming front end. Ah, uh, yes. In the tradition, in the fine demo tradition, you know, wavy screen and awesome looking yeah. text. And this is ass music. The last time we mentioned this was long ago. Yeah. Long. Well, ago. he has a a 1.0 Christmas public pre release. Mm. I have looked at it. I love X Bench personally. It's a great way to launch your stuff. And it would if you ever wanted to integrate an Amiga on like an arcade machine, let's say, this is the thing. You mm. can put it right up there, and it looks great. And the Amiga is rendering it all. Um, <clears throat> so it's out now. We'll link it up. Uh, I always, I actually have spoken to the guy that creates this. He's a, he's a real nice fella. So so uh, I, I highly recommend it. at least giving X Bench a look if you mm. want something kind of neat to launch your stuff from. Um, <clears throat> something else near and dear to my heart. This made me so happy when I saw it uh, over at Indie Retro News. There's a new CD32 disc out. There's a couple, but just I'll go to this one first. The Eric Schwartz Collection. Oh, you know I love Eric Schwartz. Uh, he did the animation in uh, uh, Super Frog. Mm-hmm. He's done all the uh, uh, Squirrel and you know all the crazy. There, <laughs> Saddam Hussein, some other wacky animations. The new disc is uh, has eighty uh, of his finest works. Eighty, <clears throat> and it's amazing how many uh, games they can fit on a single single. Well, disc. these are these aren't games. These are just the, his little videos. Oh, okay. And and it's got it's from it's everything he's done from the eight. Oh, and I don't know if it's everything, but it's it's stuff from the all the way from the eighties to the early, you know, two thousand ten ish era. Mm-hmm. He's done and this is Amiga J that did these. Um, it was I I think it was Amiga mm-hmm. J. It was his usual outfit. Yeah. Um, there's even cartoons. Uh, there's short. There's short cartoons, looping animations, tutorial, and an image browser. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I'm got this on the drive. I haven't uncompressed it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Love Eric Schwartz. If you're into that kind of stuff, and his stuff's sort of universal in a way. I mean, you don't have to have. Uh, you don't have to even speak the language to tell what's going on. It's, right. It's, it's really good stuff. I, I've always I've always liked his stuff quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> the. Uh, Next thing on my agenda here, um, there's another one of these uh, things. Again, the CD32. <clears throat> that machine is getting quite a bit of love. It is. With these compilations. Someone uh, compiled two games for the CD32. Uh, um, you have um, Hungry Horus for Houston, which I've never played that. The Horus games, I think, are they, I think they started <clears throat> out as like Spectrum games. Really? Yeah. And another game called Cybernoid. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's got two button support for both. Nice. Mm-hmm. This is something I've been reading a little bit about, and they're, apparently they're integrating. They're basically taking the uh, the uh, CD thirty two's ability to have multiple buttons, and they're going back and sort of kind of smashing it into the games, basically. Effectively. So the good news is games that you probably didn't like too much that had you jump with the up. They're trying to actually integrate Just, the button in right. there, which would that would be it's great. Yeah. When you can do it when they can do it. It's awesome. Um. An article that got put up, um, <clears throat> It's uh, the article was entitled, How the Commodore Amiga Turned Andy Warhol into a Computer Artist. It's, I've seen that before. Uh, the, it uh, It's a uh, interesting little, it's not a long article, but it talks about Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol, if you're, if for those of you, we've briefly touched on this, the Amiga launch of the, of the 1000, mm-hmm. uh, they had Andy Warhol effectively take a, a, an Amiga and they and t- t- and paint Debbie Harry with it from Blondie, mm-hmm. which I love her. Uh, and uh, when he, he was doing, he knew what he was doing. He was up there doing fills and mm-hmm. doing stuff. And I asked him, it's like, uh, how, you know, have you used it? You know, how, how many years have you been using the computer to draw pieces? He said, I've never used one, which is actually, from what the article says, was a slight, slight lie. Yeah. <laughs> He'd used a, a, an Apple uh, a Mac or something previously, but uh, they said before this he was a fan of the Xerox machine. So, uh, but uh, 
Interesting read. Mm-hmm. War, Warhol's an interesting cat. And one day I'd like to read a biography of him. Right. I don't. I don't know much about his life. He's definitely a, an artist. There's no. There's no doubt. Um, <clears throat> this week, I think we may have mentioned this briefly. Uh, there's an out, there's a game out called Enemy Two: Missing in Action. The big box collector's edition is now available. Uh, it's up for grabs. Uh, it's this is a this is an item you buy. It's the, the box, the CD. I mean, someone's put together a package. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's now you can buy it, have it shipped to you. So I we may have to have a look at this game. I've not actually seen any video of it or anything, so I'm kind of interested to see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I put up another article on uh, turning your Raspberry Pi into an Amiga, which we just talked about uh, uh, a little bit ago with Am- Ambient uh, uh, or Amoebian, uh, the uh, sort of uh, bootable Amiga environment, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I think this is going to be a big deal. These are the guys we talked about that were on uh, the podcast a couple weeks ago, the European guys. Uh, that's the Polish guy. Uh, what's his name? Do you remember the name of that podcast? The Amicast? Amicast, mm-hmm. that's it. And it, remember I was talking about, it was interesting to see you got a Polish guy talking to a, uh, these guys where I think they were from Italy or something, and they were all speaking English, but, and it was really entertaining just to listen to them talk, and they were all funny too. But uh, hey, these guys know their stuff. Yeah, this this um, amoebianism is a pretty pretty decent little uh, little item here. Um, lastly, uh, there's a uh, article out. Actually, this article is sort of misleading in the, the title of it, but it's actually near and dear to my heart. The title of it is "Getting the Amiga 500 Online." You're not you're the you're not stupid guide, <laughs> which is. <laughs> Which is Apple name, but basically what they're talking about here, this is the Amiga 500, mind you. Um, they're talking about getting it online with BBSing. Uh, it's uh, it's doable. It's not that hard, you know. I I had my Amigas on BBSs back in the day, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I'm not sure what's out there anymore. But apparently, there's something. I'm sure there are a couple you know? dedicated folks out there. Sure, running. sure. I saw something else I was going to bring up, but I can't remember the name, but I just happened to see this go on my own Facebook. It's a little thing that hooks into the Amiga that provides it with an Ethernet port to uh, to uh, network your your Amiga to your local network, put it hmm. on your LAN. Uh, I'm going to look into this thing. To, I know it was it's pretty expensive. I think it was like 128 euros or something like that. So that's pretty much their euros and... U.S. dollars are just about buck for buck right now, aren't they? It's real uh, close. The euro is about a dollar fifty. It's about fifty percent more. Really? Yeah. No, the pound is a lot closer. The uh, this would be a pricey item, but you know, if you're desperate to get your network cooking, I've got Wi-Fi adapter for the twelve hundred. I need to probably put that up some one of these days. I've never bought the fool with it. A boat's looking it up. Oh, you're right. right. Bam. Yeah. <clears throat> I knew I knew it was less than a buck and a half. Yeah. Uh, so it's a buck five. Yeah. One so, for one. That's yeah. crazy. So, good. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's the Trump do- in action. The dollar's up. He's here to save us. Hey, <laughs> you, what can I say? I'm not even going to comment on that. We'll just see what happens. But uh, that's pretty much all I had for news. Busy week, and uh, uh, I would wager with Christmas ending, we're going to see a lot more action yeah. uh, starting right now. Uh, we got some side updates this week. Yeah, so um, I have some good stuff. Dreamcatcher put up a great. Uh, review of an early Team 17 game <laughs> called Trap'em. And given our love of Rodland, uh, it, this is this kind of hit me close to my heart because it's a very Rodland-ish game. Mm. Um, so check that out. Uh, and then Aaron uh, put up one of our most popular videos of all time. Yeah. Uh, a playthrough of the CD32 game Little Devil. Well, I wouldn't say playthrough. Played until I wanted to toss the game out the window. <laughs> And, I mean, I had to fight the urge to turn this sucker off a couple times. You know, not to kill the game. I don't know what I'm doing, I guess. But it's a lot of running. And if you if you watch the video, you'll see me running down a almost endless series of hallways. <laughs> so it's uh, it was a little trying, but it was but it was fun. I'm like I said, I'm surprised the amount of people watched it. It's become it's it's certainly the quickest we've ever got up to uh, you know near 200 or whatever on a video. Mm. So. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> I uh, am cranking up. Uh, I've got a couple other Amiga thir- CD32 titles on uh, that are on the docket, uh, so I should have some more stuff this week. I don't want to. I'm not 100 percent sure what I'm going to put up, but I've got a couple of things in the can. How many CD32 games do you actually own? Like the the actual real? Oh, I know boy. you own quite a few. Oh no, I've got about 
actual physical disc that I own, I've probably got about ten. Really? Yeah. Huh. I just happen to own Little Devil, and uh, uh, of course we've already covered the the football, brutal sports football. Right. We've got, that's one I've got. Um. Then I've got some that I downloaded that were just ISOs of actual discs. Mm-hmm. One that happens to have hybrids on it. It's a two. It's a two for one uh, that I, that I picked up. Now the you can burn ISOs all day long, right? Just yeah. onto a normal. There CD. are compilation discs for the for the uh, twelve hundred. Obviously, the ones that Amiga J does, mm-hmm. but there are there are forty and one, eighty and one, nine hundred and one. You know, game. You know, the problem is with these, and I've got a, I've got them all, honestly. Is that number one? They're incredibly slow to, mm. to use. It takes forever to boot something with them. And, and, and secondly, they're very quirky, mm. you know. So, but in some instances, it's the only way you can. But I mean, they play most Amiga games. The, the, the C32 should play every Amiga game, frankly, and it probably does. But some, some will play better than others. Yeah, you know. So, and then how much, if any, um, overlap is there as far as is there a, a program or something that if you had a CD-ROM for your 1200 <coughs> to play that on there? Yeah, it, it, it should work. Uh, I've got a CD-ROM, actually. You have to, I think you may have it over here, actually. Yeah. But uh, uh, I've never bothered to hook it up. It was more important before the compact flash thing. Mm-hmm. Really, I can't, with the exception of, say, the disc that O'Brien sent us, a few things like that, I can't think of any reason to really bother, except just saying we could do it. Right. So that's probably going to be our spring project this year. It's going to be trying to get that thing hooked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But it'd be better for you than it would for me. With the 500. Yeah, yeah except, for, I mean, the fi- we just run into the same problem where there's not a good way to get video Well, I'm just out saying, there, if you want to play games on it, yeah, you yeah. know. Hey, there's a, a Amigos Labs. They're yeah, working on it, man. That's true. That's true. Um, so, let's go ahead and jump right into our game for this week. Okay. Uh, we are doing Fiendish Freddy's Big Top O Fun. Let me bring up my notes here. So... <clears throat> This game came out amazingly. I, I have to say, I was surprised how old this game was. It came out in '89, and it was uh, developed by an outfit called Gray Matter. Mm. Now, what do you know about Gray Matter? I, have you heard? Do you recall hearing that name? before? Never once. And it seems like that logo on the splash screen. I'd remember that if we'd seen it before. The uh, the fellow behind Gray Matter was a guy named Chris Gray. Mm. Okay, uh, he is Canadian. Aptly named. He's Canadian, and. Uh, uh, did work for Mindscape. He was the guy that came up with a game for the C64 called Boulder Dash. Ooh. If, which is a sort of pretty famous game. Yeah. Uh, and this guy went on to be a pretty big player. Uh, um, I'm looking over the list of stuff that he was involved in. He ended up uh, he ended up working for EA. He's, he's been around the block. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but uh, uh, his Amiga work was sort of wasn't anything super major. Uh, uh, he did some like some some kind of racing games and stuff. He did uh, a, a Motor Massacre Road Raider and Ultimate Ride. The Ultimate Ride um, is that a racing game? There, I've not played in any of these to be honest with you. So I'm not sure. But he, of course, he did Boulder Dash. But he was behind that. He ended up his uh, when he went with EA. Of course, he worked on tons of games. I could sit here all day and tell you the stuff he worked on. It's just like. He was uh, involved in, you know, of course, his games are done by teams. But mm-hmm. he, he Perfect Weapon, NHL All-Star Hockey, uh, Foes of All, WWF King of the Ring, which I'm the only person on earth that liked that game. <laughs> um, uh, Amazing Spider-Man versus Kingpin. Just a lot of kind of, well, I don't want to say throwaway titles, but stuff you've heard of. D- Dirty Harry, Mad Max, he did some stuff like that. Techno Cop, he was involved in that, which I just did an Amigos play on a while right. back. So... He had a. He actually has sort of a pedigree. I mean, Boulder Dash. Enough said. If you do that, you're you're sort of you've sort of made your career at that mm-hmm. point. He ended up being an EA executive, and and I, for all I know, he still is. I'm not 100 sure what he's doing now. Um, <clears throat> this game came on three discs, three excruciating discs. Uh, uh, <laughs> three discs we'll get, of pain. Get into that later. You could do five players, which is impressive. Which is impressive. There were it was a hot seat uh, type game. Uh, the uh, game ran on the OCS and um, got ported to. I didn't realize this had gotten ported anywhere, and 
it got ported to uh, the PC DOS, which I can only imagine what the sound would be on that in '89. <laughs> maybe too. it has that. Beep 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 beep. Or I was gonna say maybe it has that uh, the same thing that the net or what was the golf game that oh, had real, the real, real sound. sound. <laughs> it hit the tree, Jim. Um, but anyway, this was on DOS, the C64, which I'd like to see what that looks yeah. like. Uh, the Atari ST, of course, uh, the, uh, the uh, Amstrad CPC, and uh, um, ZX Spectrum had had. I'd a, like to see the Spectrum version. Yeah, too. I know you're not kidding. Um, so, what is Phoenix Freddy's big top of fun? Well, the plot of this game is that the bank shows up in this long, incredibly long stretch limo to hand the ringmaster a legal note that says if the Circus does not pay the bank ten grand by midnight, I believe. Then the circus would lose its land and it would be taken over by the bank. Mm -hmm. All right. So, in much the same vein as Three Stooges, it's, this game reminds me of Three Stooges in a, in a lot of ways. So, the object of the game then is to you are a member of the circus, various members. You're trying to do. I can't explain how this works. But you're trying to do well enough in your particular um, uh, profession to get money that's uh, to impress these judges, and your and money is given to you based on how well these judges assess how you did on the on your performance. Okay, um, and we'll get into that in a minute. The uh, hiccup, the fly in the ointment, if you will, is Fiendish Freddy, the uh, namesake of the title. He's a little clown who's also incredibly fiendish. He's fiendish <laughs> Freddy. And he does everything he can to screw you when you're doing these events because he doesn't want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. He wants the bank to foreclose. <clears throat> so uh, He's kind of like the, uh, you know what it reminds me of is the, the guy in Funhouse. The pinball machine. What's his name? Funhouse? <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're talking about. The, yeah, the, I, the, I love the that puppet game. guy. R uh, R R Rudy. Rudy, right. Rudy. Um, so you've got several different events, and this is think to yourself, summer games. Mm -hmm. Someone said, "Hey, let's do a games game with the circus." All right, great idea, good move. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, so you've got you've got several. I think there's six events. Okay, you've got you've got the high dive. Okay, um, the high dive is basically you are and you and you take several turns jumping into smaller and smaller containers. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you've also got uh, the, uh, let me see here, after the high dive, I believe you've got juggling. Juggling, and uh, uh, you're juggling can or lit torches and bowling balls and babies and sometimes bombs that the Fiendish Freddy will throw in to screw you. <clears throat> you've got, so that's a, the second event. Uh, the next event is uh, uh, the trapeze. So you're a trapeze artist. You're trying to get through the trapeze uh, uh, course mm -hmm. effectively, uh, which is which is that's a, that's one of the tougher events in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> the next event you've got is the knife throw. So you've got your uh, uh, busty your busty uh, assistant blindfolded and strapped to a spinning wheel with balloons around it. You try to throw knives at her, not kill her. <laughs> um, and then you've got the tightrope act. Right, which you try to get across the tightrope. Another one I'm not particularly good at, uh, but uh, you try to get across the tightrope while Fred, Freddy's, of course, screwing with you. Because, and then we'll get into that in a minute. What he does, and then you also have the cannonball, the human cannonball, mm -hmm. where you try to get shot out of a cannon, and you have to gauge where you're going to land so you can put your net there, and you do this before you shoot. So you've got you've got these events, and <clears throat> after every event. Um, a panel of judges appear. The panel of judges is like five or six clowns, and the they very were, wealthy clowns. Well, I don't know what there's mm -hmm. uh, again. There's, there's some parts of this that are left to the imagination, <laughs> but uh, these clowns judge your performance. So if you do a great job, they'll applaud and be real happy and they give you a lot of money. If you stink, they will make make it easy to understand that they think you were horrible. Mm. They pull each other, and they'll beat each other up, they'll pull <laughs> each other's hair, and they'll give you a few bucks, but not very much. And you've got to earn, in your whole performance of these events, you have to earn a total of $10,000. And if you do, you save the circus. And if you don't, 
then and the ending of this is pretty funny. Uh, it just shows the tent. It shows the tent go down, and it shows a huge building being put up, and it says Freddy Towers, and Freddy stands there going like that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's Freddy apparently has ta- has taken the land and built his enormous high rise on it, which I always <laughs> thought was great. He's one of the most um, innocent looking. Tiny bad guys in the history of gaming. Just this tiny little guy. Mm. So, that's the events, and that's pretty much the way they go down. Now, the events are a lot more, you know, there's obviously there's a little more going on than just those events. So, for example, the uh, the high dive, you are jumping, and every jump is an increasing height. So, uh, and into a, into a smaller container, I mm-hmm. guess. So, the first event... Uh, the first section of that, you'll be jumping off a platform, and what you've got to do is in the corner, it'll say, you know, it'll say the name of a, of, a, of a pose, and then you will strike that pose. Strike the pose. Right, or exactly. And then it'll just do this over and over until you until you complete the dive. Then that's the way it goes on every one, and you get more points and more money every pose you get right. Mm. All right. Um. Freddy will occasionally show up with a fan, trying to blow you off course. You know, like <laughs> there he is, be a jerk. Yeah, that's him. That's the. That's really. It doesn't look like that in the, in the actual game. And then <laughs> you've looks- got. Then you've got. Uh, uh, on top of that, you're diving into smaller and smaller things until eventually you dive into like a cinder block, and your mm. guy just sort of walks off with his. He's tiny with these long arms where he dove into this thing. Also, there's a cup of water you dive into. So that's a good event, and then. Juggling, Freddy stands off stage, and so they're throwing you things to juggle, and your object is to keep them juggling, and you have to come, you know, make sure they keep going. And you can drop something occasionally, but you can just, as long as you keep it going. Freddy will throw in stuff like bombs mm. or missiles. So if you drop one of those, you explode. Act over, you know. Uh, uh, on the uh, uh, on the event where you're throwing knives, uh, it's that's a that's not that difficult an event, but Freddy will occasionally screw up your. Screw up, you know. Shake the whole screen will shake. He's mm-hmm. doing something to screw you up. On the uh, uh, on the uh, t- on the tightrope, it's great when you screw up on the tightrope because your guy's sort of hanging there, and Freddy will come over and either plank your fingers off to your f- fall to your doom, or he'll hit you with a hammer. There's there's several different things he'll do to screw you on that. It's <laughs> funny. Trapeze is sort of the same thing. If you uh, you're swinging back and forth, and if you miss, your your chick's working without a net. It just shows her plummet to her death. Oh my gosh! It's the game morbid. has a, the game has a, a history of having this sort of a dark humor mm-hmm. behind it. You know, there's a way to be cut completely in twain, cut in half. Wow! You know, and uh, the the and you know when you're when you're playing human cannibal, for example, if you if you miss t- your target. You can either go into the ground and dig into it like Bugs Bunny and be mauled, or if you overshoot it, you can hit one of the pillars that hold up the tent, like bang, you know that sort of thing. That's pretty funny. And then uh, uh, you, you know, you only get so many chances, and then eventually you're gone. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much the game. It's just an event-based game. So it breaks down to how much do you like the events. Mm-hmm. I like the high dive. Um, really, the only ones I've, I just have really have a problem with is I'm not good at all. I'm not great at any of them, but I'm not good at the tightrope, and um, that's I, I find that one difficult. The uh, the, uh, the cannonball. There was a time when I knew exactly what to do, and I could always get my guy in the bucket. But it, that time has passed, <laughs> so I'm, it's all kind of trial and error. Mm-hmm. The one thing that I really like with the game, though, is the attention to detail, and the art, and the graphics. This is cartoon level uh, graphics. Some of the best graphics I ever saw on the Amiga. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, very colorful. Yes, colorful. The sound is great. The uh, it's funny. Again, something not easy to pull off mm-hmm. in a game. Uh, the uh, it, things just don't happen over and over. Different in you know there'll be different outcomes. Like I said, they're like. Just like falling off the tightrope, there's different ways that you he knocks you off. Mm-hmm. There is a dark humor to it. Freddy is a, is a, 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 an amusing foe, you know. Although really, most of the time it's just 
It's just whether you suck or not. The clowns that give uh, do the judgings are real funny. Do you find that the, this this game controls better than the games games? Once you learn the controls, you're fine. You know, the hardest thing, for example, the dives. The different dives are performed when the bell rings. You hit your joystick in one of the eight directions. Okay, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, eight. And so you have to sort of memorize what those eight directions are, what they, what the pose is, and that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little chart on my phone that I always draw up when it comes up, so I can remember what which ones to do. Um, but it's fun. I'm not sure every event is the the depth. You know, it's just like summer games or winter games. We we covered winter games. Some events have more replay value than others. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but. Uh, uh, I, there's no event in this that I absolutely despise. And there's no event that it's, it's gonna, you're going to hurt yourself trying to play. And there's some creative stuff in here. You know, the juggling, I think, is pretty creative. The diving, I mean, they did a good job with the theme. Mm -hmm. You know, the art style, like I said, is just tremendous. I just, I love everything about it. And the fact that they, I mean, this is 89. I, w I always wonder why games didn't look this good going forward. They were all, I mean, they, they did a lot of beautiful things with this. Of course, this sort of game lends itself to that sort of art style where you right. can actually sit down and draw things and make it look real pretty. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the humor is good in it and the sound's good. I, I really think it's a good game. What, what, what were your impressions, Bo? Well, I didn't get to play this too much because I couldn't get it to op emulate properly. Um, I wish that I would have thought of firing up the Xbox to play it on there, because you're right. I could have done that, and we could have recorded right into the capture device. From what I saw from the YouTube the YouTube playthroughs, it seems like a no-brainer. Like, why have there, not, have there not been circus games, you know, in the past, other than this game? It just seems like it's because of the way that you have multiple sort of acts in a circus, it seems like a no-brainer. Right. And... and um I don't think this game was that popular. I mean, I, none of my friends talked about it. Or when would, was this released? What year? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Okay. Like, no, I would, like I would have people come over, and I'd be like, "Come on, let's play some." And and part of the reason was, and this is that this game's Achilles' heel, which we touched on earlier. The load trials on this were just atrocious. Mm. It took forever to load, and we were talking about uh, thanking the uh, people that did WHD load earlier. And this game right here, and this and like Body Blows is another one. <laughs> it was made for WHD. It's like, though. holy smokes. It took so... I remember playing this, and I... There's a little scene when you pick your little avatar comes up, and it goes, do 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 And I was always so happy. I remember seeing it when I was playing it this time around. I was like, oh. It just filled me with delight, because it, was, it took so long to load, that it was almost like, uh, um, this is your reward. You know, hey, bing, ding, you can finally play. It's like, oh boy, I get to play for three <laughs> seconds, you know. Uh, the, the load times were atrocious on this. And, I mean, for the obvious reason, it's loading up a ton of graphics, you mm -hmm. know, and, and sound effects and everything. I'm not terribly surprised that it took that long, but, you know, and it's just the way games were back then. We are a spoiled bunch now where we don't have to sit around and wait for these things to load. And it's, right. that's so great. We were talking about it earlier, how much uh, the addition of, like, the compact flash and these other things have, have helped... Uh, make this a much more painless process of loading. Uh, so that's that's something I don't I don't miss from from back in the day. But as it stands now, with if you've got this on a, uh, on your hard drive uh, or with the WHD uh, load, I mean this game goes up in my opinion to one of my favorite games on the Amiga just because of that. Before uh, I just wouldn't play it that much because I didn't want to wait. You know, truth be told, this is also a game you can load up and show your buddies. Look at this. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, this was the best thing. I mean, you got like eighty nine. There's there weren't a lot of games that looked this good. In no, 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 absolutely not. Um, <clears throat> I looked up the reviews for this bad boy. I was surprised actually. The reviews weren't as really as good as I thought they'd be. Let me have a quick glance here. Like Amiga actually gave it an eighty four, but Amiga Format gave it a fifty nine. Holy cow! You know, do you uh, think it was just because of the load times or? I would wager that load times were probably a part of it. But I mean, mostly, I'm looking at these grades, and it got reviewed by a lot of places. You know, 80s, you know, mid 80s to low 90s was the was the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this game deserves a little bit better. Now, some people don't like the game series, you know, uh, either. And I'm guessing maybe that some people just don't just this wasn't their cup of tea, right? You know, but uh, um, 
I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. Did you, what was your opinion on it? I, like I said, I, you know, like we're watching this on YouTube right now, and I mean, it just this just it seems like such a great idea. And maybe you know, maybe the controls weren't perfect, but the controls were never perfect on any of these games. Games, you know, when you're trying to do eight different things with a button and a stick, you know, it's not going to be spectacular. But I. Whatever shortcomings that has, I think, are really outweighed by the humor, like you said, the graphics, and the, the gameplay, even for its faults. Yeah, yeah. I uh, You'd be hard-pressed to find a more attractive, more colorful game. I was playing this with Luke in the room, my son, and he was captivated. He thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was laughing his butt off at somebody, and it is funny. I mean, a lot of it's funny. I mean, your guy's juggling babies and stuff. Right, right. You know, and the fact that there's something else that we barely touched on, the fact that Phoenix Freddy... They slip in in these events. To, I mean, this is unlike California Games or something like that, where they, here's a guy who's trying to screw you. Now, the stuff he does is generally not that bad. It's mischievous. But it is. But it's it's neat to have an adversary out there just to mess with you. Yeah. It's yeah. a different angle that these other games really didn't have that. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And so it makes it kind of, it makes it kind of amusing. Mm -hmm. So overall, I give it a high score. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this will probably... And when we do our next uh, games of the year, this might make it. It might edge on there. It's just one of my favorites. Of course, I'm again. I'm biased. I used to play the hell out of it. So man, there you go. When uh, did you look it up on eBay? I see, did. I did look it, it up, and uh, uh, there's only one up mm. right now. Uh, there's now. It's funny thing is this game was more prevalent from other. I saw ST versions. I even saw the Spectrum version up for sale. Mm -hmm. The Amiga had one one copy up box. It was uh, in the UK, and it was shipped. It was 55 bucks US, uh, so, you know, whatever that is in, in, in pounds. Uh, but uh, um, there are plenty that were sold recently, so I'm guessing there'll be a few more that comes up. Now, if you are if you have an Atari ST or a Spectrum, you're in business. There there are more copies of that, and they're, and they're more reasonable as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how, again, I don't know how big a seller this was. I mean, it got ported to a decent amount of machines, but no consoles. This why wasn't this on a console? I can't figure that either. Maybe they, I, I, my guess is they couldn't handle it at the time. Eighty nine. You'd been going to what? The, that was the Super Nintendo. That was before the Super Nintendo. So was that the NES so then? Would, yeah, or the Genesis would have been the only thing that could have handled it. That was and I don't know if the Genesis could handle the graphics and sound like that. I mean, Probably I guess it could come it close. Could, but the, the Genesis was very early on, and I don't know how many yeah. Amiga games were being ported at that time. This, I, th I mean. Given the success of those game series, though, I, it, it surprised me that this mm -hmm. didn't make it out. But I'm sure they had their reasons. Yeah. But uh, I give it I give it a thumbs up. Um, we're going to start a new uh, little segment here we like to call Questions from the Chat. So we are? In case you, All right, you haven't are. noticed, um, if you're not watching the this on Twitch right now, um, we have a question from the chat room. And it is from Pregnant Sausage. <laughs> oh and my. he oh my says, uh, or she says, you never know because it is a Pregnant Sausage. Uh, greets from Canada, guys. I got a sense going, eh? that the Amiga was never pushed to show its true potential in gaming through its unique abilities. For example, the copper chip, the S-Ham mode. When you see its impressive demo scene stuff, crack intros at that time. Was that true, or did I somehow fall asleep through a whole renaissance in, a game, in Amiga gaming by the industry? What do you think, Aaron? It's a tough question. Was it ever... The demo scene on the Amiga, it really is a unique amongst pretty much anything. I think... I'll, you got to think a lot... Some demo guys went on to be game developers... And I think that will happen for a reason. It's mm -hmm. because these guys had the secret knowledge, man. They went in there and tooled around with this stuff till they, and they figured out what it could do. I think some of it was laziness in terms of uh, uh, in terms of why they didn't get it didn't push out. I mean, obviously the Amiga's potential was not was not met. Even I'm only a very occasionally would it be fully realized in games. <clears throat> um, if you watch some of these demos, they do things that are unbelievable. I mean, I, I to this day I'm flabbergasted at some. I was like, how they got this this machine to do that? Uh, but I just don't think people took the time, or had the knowledge, or had the ability to to maximize what it could do. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think that, uh, just like O'Brien's is saying, really it wasn't until after the demise of Commodore 
that things really started to to take off and you know things like first person shooters and lots of the amiga was doing lots of things <laughs> it was never designed to do it just kind of happened too late for those ideas to really become commercially viable and unfortunately here's a you know you know you're hamstrung when you're hamstrung by your own company right you had i mean let's face facts guys we had a bunch of hacks running the show they had a bunch of people that didn't that were looking out for themselves they didn't really care much about anything else they had huge salaries Mm -hmm. and then they when it folded they didn't they had they were good to go yeah you know and then once the amiga properties were were pitched around much like the juggling in this it's just like there's it was just crazy time no one's calm and all at that that point no one gave you know it it was over so it's Mm -hmm. true if you think about what's happening now with the uh, hardware that's coming out that you know in 2016 that add-on stuff you know, some of this stuff. There was plenty of room for expansion of the Amiga from a from an operating system perspective, from a hardware perspective. And it's a shame that we'll never know what they could have came up with if we had been uh, getting new Amiga materials since 1985 to current day, like your Mac, for example. You know, I have no doubt that it had enough. Uh, they had enough innovative things going on where it could have been a big player. Mm-hmm. But you know. It's tough for a company to survive all those years. I mean, look at Apple, but they've been up the creek a couple times. You know, when they fired Jobs the first time and, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, almost flopped over. Yeah. And even now, they a company as huge and successful as Apple, they're having problems on their computer side right now. You know, because that's that's a difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so who knows? But in terms of why it was never why it never met its full potential. I'd say, like Boat said, it just it just happened. It happened on effectively a dead machine, right? Really, when it really started kicking, right? It kind of sad. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and uh, thank you, Pregnant Sausage, for that question. Uh, if you all want to tune in, any of you listeners, if you'd like to tune in and watch us live on Twitch, uh, we're going to start streaming every show going forward. Uh, we usually record at around nine thirty ish. Uh, on Friday nights, that's Eastern Time, so that's crazy late for you guys in Europe. But if you're up and you want to tune in, uh, feel free to participate in the show live via the chat room. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our wonderful Patreon sp- uh, supporters. We're going to start with David McCrandles. David McCrandles, he gave us a ton of money. So, David, Thanks, Dave. thank you. You are our newest um, Patri- or uh, Amigos super fan. I can see that guy in then his... Uh- <laughs> Patronage very quick after that. Uh, we got Jason Warrens, uh, head Amigos uh, Technical Labs, um, Graham Vebke, Rob O'Hara, Paul Harrington, Laurent Giroux, our number one fan in France, Jonas uh-huh. Rollo, Cole Bjorn Barman, Tapes from the Crypt, Adam Bradley, winner of Defender of the Crown, Chris Folds, Will Williams, Daniel Bingston, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Chad Halstead, and Brent Dowdy. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast. We're going to we're gonna have to expand the show just to read those. I know it. <laughs> uh, so, next week, Aaron, we are going to do a game suggested by our newest super fan, David McCrandles. We're going to play International Karate Plus. Yeah! I can't wait. I can't wait. I've been wanting to try this one. Yeah. This is a game I've really never had a cup of tea with, so I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be I fantastic. love me some karate. As you know, <laughs> I'm a third degree brown belt in Kutch to be Saint Kai. You've never mentioned that before. Oh, is that true? I'll go into a full <laughs> dissertation next week. Uh, all right, guys. We're going to see you next week. Until then. <laughs>